Hello friends, welcome to God's Eagle Ministries. At God's Eagle Ministries, we are seeding the nations with God's word and God is transforming lives through uh, the timeless truth in His word. My name is Ambassador Orojo Monday Ogbe and today is um, 27th of May, uh, Friday the 27th of May 2022 and Otakeda content count is 2,220,576. Uh, the main title today is Perfect Prophecy, True Story of Driving a Volkswagen Beetle on Three Wheels and Lessons, plus Prophecy Concerning Africa, America, and the World for Intercession. Now the subtitle here is Perfect Prophecy in our series of Perfect Words, Works, and Wonders, True Story of Volkswagen Beetle Driven on Three Wheels by My Humble Self, and Lessons Concerning Prophecy in the Churches and the Dark Ages plus prophecy concerning the church in Africa, America, and the world by prophetess Alicia for in-depth intercession on all fronts. Big names are going down, big churches are shutting down. Received 24th of May, uh, 2022. So Heavenly Father, we just want to uh, thank you for today. Thank you for, your, uh, for the privilege uh, to assess you any place, anywhere, anytime. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of access. This is a gift, awesome gift, that was procured for us by the death of your son upon the cross at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for life, for breath in our lungs. Thank you for how far you kept us. Thank you for, for uh, providing for us. Thank you for shielding us from all the fairy darts of the enemy against our minds, against that which pertains to us in the mighty name of jesus christ we give you all the praise and honor in the name of jesus we are humbled to be a vessel that you want to use today to speak to your people all across the world i ask spirit of the living god that you will supercharge my words that you will use my voice my voice my mind my spirit my soul my body for this session so that lord as this word comes out it comes out with power it comes out with authority it comes out with healing it comes out with deliverance it comes out with a restoration in the spirit, soul, and body, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your word says you sent your word, and your word brought healing, deliverance, and restoration. So shall it be concerning this word that is going out now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as the word of life, light, joy, peace, and 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 um, and uh, humility goes out even this moment. Let it reach into the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and bone and marrow, and let it kickstart them to the plans and the purposes for which you've created them, that, Lord, it will cause them to be ordered in the path that you've marked out for them in the mighty name of Jesus. For these times and seasons, in Jesus' name, thank you. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So, hello, friends. Uh, today is... Uh, 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 I, I, and I congratulate all the children in our midst and those who are children at heart as it pertains to the kingdom on this glorious children's day our prayer for all the children in our midst and those who are childlike concerning the kingdom is from Isaiah 54 verses 13 to 14 and I read that from the Amplified Bible Classic Edition and all your spiritual children or the, the uh, biological children shall be disciples taught by the Lord and obedient to his will and great shall be the peace and undisturbed composure of your children you shall establish yourself in righteousness that is in bracket rightness in conformity with God's will and order you shall be far from evil the thought of oppression or destruction for you shall not fear and from terror for it shall not come near you this was shall be our portion in the land of the living both now and forever more in jesus name amen we shall be far from oppression and destruction of the wicked terror shall not come near us and faith replaces fear in every area of our lives in the mighty name of jesus christ amen we shall be established in righteousness and great peace shall be our portion that of our children both spiritual and biological as the lord teaches us through the spirit resident within us in jesus name Amen. I would like us to meditate on these four scriptures concerning children, both biological and spiritual, as we reflect on them with the intent of applying them to our lives in actionable steps. In Jesus' name, Amen. I start from Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to 16. 
people were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Matthew 18, 3. And said, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 18, verse 4 says, Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19, 14 says, But Jesus said, Let the children alone, and do not hinder them from coming to me. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We bring it today's uh, subtitle, Perfect Prophecy in Perfect Words, Works and Wonders. True story of Volkswagen Beetle driven on three wheels by my humble self and lessons concerning prophecy in the churches and the dark ages plus prophecy concerning the church in Africa, America and the world by Prophetess Alicia for in-depth intercession on all fronts. Big names are going down, and big churches are shutting down. This was received uh, three days ago, I think, uh, four days ago, three days ago, received on 24th of May, uh, 2022. But before then, if you miss the last cycle, perfect relationship, in perfect words, works and wonders, seven indicators of toxic relationship to manage, purge and avoid like a plague, plus seven indicators of God-ordained and god model relationship to cherish. Three gray areas to note for toxic relationships to keep in mind and guide your relationship decision and five ways to pursue peace in a toxic relationship. You can get those links there or you can find it on our website at atakada.org where there are over 2 million contents there, discipleship, evangelism, and everything else in between that will help you develop and uh, be all that God has called you to be. Let's take a look at the first title there. Perfect Prophecy in Perfect Words, Works and Wonders. True Story of Driving a Volkswagen Beetle on Three Wheels and Lessons and Lessons uh, for uh, concerning, uh, sorry, driving was a lesson concerning prophecy in the churches and dark ages. All right, true story. Okay, true story. Box charging be, uh, beetle being driven by my humble self on three wheels and lessons concerning prophecy in the dark and it and the, uh, in the churches and the dark ages. It was the year 1993. After completing my university education offshore, I came home to begin the National Youth Service Corps (NYC) in Lagos, Nigeria. I set out to visit one of my friends in the mainland and took a Volkswagen Beetle car for a spin on four wheels. Whilst on top speed on the Gamu Seven Up Bridge facing the National Theatre as you head towards through Lagos, Nigeria, I saw oncoming vehicles dodging a fast-spinning tire. Uh, that had gone into and onto their lane on top speed. For some split seconds, I was wondering where on earth did this one lone tire come from that is creating commotion for the oncoming vehicle. It was after a while I realized that the glorious beetle I was driving was actually moving straight and nicely on the lane I needed to be on, but on three wheels. Immediately, I realized the beetle I was driving was the culprit. culprit. The right back side of the vehicle dropped and started dragging along the bridge in the center of the highway. Interesting to note that despite driving on three wheels, the car did not divert. It just kept going straight on as if nothing, absolutely nothing had occurred to my vehicle. I got out of a three-legged Volkswagen uh, uh, Beetle, got my tire, fixed it and got back on my glorious journey to my friend with no casualties whatsoever. Thank God it could have been worse. This true story represents the way the church of today is structured and operates. Some are operating or ministering on, I'm sorry to say, one wheel, some two wheels, some three wheels, and very few indeed are operating on total capacity of four wheels, and God designed the church to function full capacity. You ask me, how is that possible? And we have not crashed. Wait until the stress, stress, stress test starts. It is called crisis. The church of today are not deploying the full arsenal of the fivefold ministry gives within them, and that, and that, and that God has gloriously allocated to His body because God is a practitioner of division of labor. 
and it does not usurp the authority of others in the exercising the divine gift and function the Lord has given out to his body. An evangelist is not a prophet. A prophet is not a teacher. A teacher is not a pastor. A pastor is not an apostle. Although you might be able to carry out some of these functions in a limited capacity, but that cannot be your office. That's not your office. Okay? Okay? It is called an office, and when we operate in others' offices, we are relieving them on a temporary basis until the right office owner takes over or shows up. All these offices are necessary for the equipping of the saints. None is above or below the other in significance and importance. They are complementary and not competitive functions as we have them today. We are all brethren and the Holy Spirit distributes this ministry function as the need arises. This also brings the importance of having uh, to engage across fellowships as the early disciples did it. All in the name of protecting the sheep, the shepherds of our day are running ministry as one man business and protecting the sheep at all costs using manipulative and mind control schemes to keep God's children enslaved to them. Let's get the scriptural back into these words before we talk about the most attacked ministry of the fivefold. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 16. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, appeal to and beg you to walk, lead a life worthy of divine calling to which you have been called, with behavior that is a credit to the summons to God's service, living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind, humility, and meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness, with patience, bearing with one another, making allowance because you love one another. Be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the harmony and oneness of and produced by the Spirit in binding power of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as there is also one hope that belongs to the calling you receive. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of us all, who is above all, sovereign over all, providing all, pervading all, and living in us all. Yet grace, God's unmerited favor, was given to each of us individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways in proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and bounteous gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He led a strain of vanquished foes, and he bestowed gifts on men. But he ascended, but he ascended. Now what can this he ascended mean? But that he had previously as descended from the highs of heaven into the depths, the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the very same as he who is also has ascended high above all the heavens, that he is presence, my fill all things, the whole universe from the lowest to the highest. And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave men to us, some to be apostles, special messengers, some prophets, inspired preachers and expanders, some evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, some pastors, shepherds of his flock and teachers. His intention was the perfecting and full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's church, Christ's body, the church, that it might develop. What's the intent? That it might develop until we all attain oneness in, in the faith and in comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God. That we may arrive at really mature manhood, the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, and the completeness found in Him. So then, we may no longer be children tossed like sheep to and fro between chance ghosts of teaching, wavering with every changing wind of doctrine. The prey of the cunning and cleverness of unscrupulous men, gamblers engaged in every shifting form of trickery and inventing errors to mislead. Rather, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, unfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things into Him who is the head, even Christ, Messiah, the Anointed One. For because of him, the whole body, the church, in all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it is supplied. When each part, I repeat, when each part with power adapted to its need 
is working properly in all its functions grows to full maturity building itself up in love it is instructive to know that if these fivefold ministry gifts are not operational in our fellowship we cannot come to maturity we cannot have unity in the body because we will be functioning with half baked information in working and working with god we need real time information to the mind of the of the spirit that was why in Acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 3, we read this account. Now in the church assembly at Antioch, there were prophets, inspired interpreters of the will and purpose of God and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Black, Lucius, or Cyrene, Manaim, a member of the court of the Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord, Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Separate now for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they put their hands on them and send them away. Um, just a word here to, to add. What scripture did they open to find out Panabas and Saul were supposed to be separate to go to the mission field? You can't find that in the Bible. But to go to the mission field, yes, it's in the Bible. But who are you going with? Where are you going to? It's not there. That's where the various ministry gifts in the body comes to play. With the prophets in their, in, in, in their midst, they were able to add real-time word to divine counsel, which is the ministry prophet occupy. Prophets are the most persecuted of all the fivefold ministry function because they reveal secrets that God unfolds. And when leaders start backsliding, God will use the prophet to bring things to light and instruct the brethren in the paths they need to follow. Some felt in felt that the prophet had too much control and sway over the congregation and so just like in the old testament times with the jews where prophets were persecuted so also in the new testament and down right through the middle ages we read accounts of prophet being stoned to death during the middle ages for speaking out the counsel of god that didn't agree with the direction leadership was taken why is the period between 600 and 1450 ce uh, after the death of Christ referred to as the dark ages why is it referred to as the dark ages the period the period between 600 and 1450 CE is often called the middle ages in Europe because uh, and around the world because it came between the Roman Empire assuming uh, you forget the Besser times and the beginning of the modern age and it's sometimes called the dark age because it was purportedly unenlightened it was only lightened because those who were to give specificity to instruction of God were taken out. <laughs> Before the Dark Ages, brethren were referred by their ministry gifts. Let's read some of the accounts in Acts 21, 8 to 14. And on the morrow, we left there and came to Caesarea. We went into the house of a Philip, who? Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven first deacons and stayed with him. And he had four maiden daughters who had a gift of prophecy. You see that? While we were remaining there for some time, a prophet named, again, a prophet named Agapus came down from Judea. And coming to see us, he took Paul's belt, with it bound his own feet and hands, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, the Jews at Jerusalem shall bind like this the man who owns his belt, and he shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles, heathen. Okay? So this is prophet Agapos giving an enlightenment to what was going to happen in the future to Paul. Did it happen? Yes, it did. Okay, when we heard this, verse 12, when we heard this, they didn't, uh, Agapos did not go opening the Bible to come up with that information. It was an inspiration given to him by the Holy Spirit. It says, Thus says the Holy Spirit. Okay, and he didn't pick up Evangelist Philip to speak through, not that he did speak through the other prophets that were there, but he spoke through. Uh, Agapos concerning uh, Paul's uh, visitation to Jerusalem. Now, verse 12. When we heard this, both we and the residents of that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul replied, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart like this? For I hold myself in readiness not only to be arrested and bound and imprisoned in Jerusalem, but also even to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not yield to our persuading, we stopped ar arguing and employed him saying the lord's will be done just an expand expansion here we have a lot of sick people in our midst in the churches today we have a lot of people who are 
directionless they don't know they read the bible but there's nothing specific there that has to do with them concerning the specifics of their lives the home to marry and all of that it is in the place of prayer that the holy spirit will begin to pick anyone to choose true and most of the time it comes to the prophet because prophets are wired to hear their ears are are cocked to hear from god their eyes are fine tuned to 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 see and their hearts are more allowed to hear it's not compared other gifts can see that but the fact of the matter is that whoever is occupying an office is an office it's it's like it's adapted to that person that person has been trained by god and trained by the circumstances of life and you can't come overnight as an evangelist and take over the place of a prophet neither can a prophet take over the place of an evangelist Okay, so uh, you sit in there, somebody is sick and it's about sin. The Holy Spirit can use one of the brethren in there and say, it's about it's because of this sin or that sin. And they will go into specific. And then the person confesses and the sickness goes away. All right? And, but today we get up and pray generally. There's no mind of the Spirit. We're just using scripture. I'm not saying it's wrong to use scripture. But we have to have a real counsel of God as led by the Spirit. He said it's going to, the Spirit will lead us into all truth. If the Bible has all the truth, why would the Holy Spirit lead us into all truth as Jesus said? You know, so this is the point. So we can get general counsel from scripture, but for specifics, the offices become crucial. When churches backslide and end up in apostasy, it is because there is not real time divine counsel being unfolded to congregation. So where are the prophets? Most have gone into hiding. Some have opened their own ministries because nobody is listening to them or giving them platform in the regular sociality that we have. Some say that the messages are too negative and that bring that, that things are already bad enough and they do not need more negativity. Some are not heard, heard, and when they are ahead, it is always with suspicion, especially when there is no repentance and sin is prevalent in the churches. Some have even said prophecy is about expanding the scripture and not the future or the secret sins. And a prophecy ended with the old covenant. But I wonder what scripture these people read. How many positivity do you have in Revelation? More so that many of Church of Christ, Church of Christ today, have become this church of Satan. What do you expect? We where we have glorified earthly wealth above kingdom wealth and soulish gravitation above gravi spiritual gravitation definitely punishment will come that means things will go not because we are the light okay the instruction of apostle paul is instructive here in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 22 and i read it it says do not quench in brackets suppress or subdue the holy spirit Number two, the verse 20 says, Do not spawn the gifts and utterances of the prophets. Do not depreciate prophetic revelation or despise inspired instructions, exhaustion or warning. But test and prove all things until you can recognize what is good to that hold fast. Abstain from evil, shrink from it and keep aloof from it. In whatever form or whatever kind it may be. Paul's letter was addressed to the Christian congregation of Thessalonica. So he's referring to, in verse 20, to all prophecies found in the canon of scripture. A dedicated Christian that claims to serve the true God then goes out alone with the world and his corrupt influences and partake in his corruption adds to his sins because he is treating prophecies with contempt. He is ignoring all the words that God has a cause to be spoken through the mouth of his prophets and spokesmen. Such a professed Christian has these words from the God he claims to serve. He has a Bible but ignores it in favor of men's ideas which appeal to his selfish desires. To do this is to insult God, to be a hypocrite more reprehensible than the unbelievers. How are we to test them? Verse 21. How are we to test them? To examine and scrutinize something to see if it is genuine by checking the Greek Septuagint version of the Hebrew scriptures and any other New Testament Greek scriptures available at the time. This implies that there were bad prophecies that failed the test. Since prophecies in the canon cannot fail, Paul was referring only to prophecies outside of canon. Now, a canon is the Bible. What is then prophecy? Prophesying, as we know from both the major and the minor prophet, is most commonly a matter of seeing the present situation, discerning it, and seeing the inevitable consequence of what state leading to a future condition. And we know that any man may speak as long as he speaks as the oracle of God, and women too may prophesy. I think this is a very broad subject, covering many aspects of a very wide spectrum. Some 
the congregation in New Testament had within them legitimate prophets of God giving revelations from God. We see this in several times as in Acts chapter 15 verse 32. We don't have time to go into that right now. Acts 11, 27, Acts 31, Acts 21, 10, it is seen. Thus, when someone stood up and claimed to be a prophet with a message revelation from God, the New Testament instruction was as usual, practical. 1 Corinthians 14, 22, say, tongues then are a sign, not for believers, but for believers. Prophecy, however, is for believers, not for unbelievers. 1 Corinthians 14, 26 says, What then shall we say, brothers, when you come together, everyone under the psalm or a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation? All of this must be done to build up the, what, church? And then 1 John 4, 1, not build a world. 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So prophets actually created a lot of trouble in their days as well that are not inspired by God. Second Thessalonians 2.20 Not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth, or by later asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Will all prophetic utterances come to pass? That's the question I ask you now. I ask myself. Most prophetic utterances depend on the recipient they are sent to on their decision because God will not violate our will. Let us know what's going to happen if we keep in the path that we've headed. If they are willing to repent and obey, God can show mercy and abort whatever calamity that has been uttered because God is drawn to a repentant heart. Mercy and truth go before him, we're told in Psalms 89 verse 14. We read also an account where God sent prophet Elijah to Ahab with the word of impending horrific judgment against Ahab, Jezebel, and their descendants. Evidently, Jezebel ignored the warning for the punishment came swift and short to her. However, the warning made an impression on Ahab. He immediately repented and humbled himself before the Lord. God asked some very interesting questions in the Bible. In 1 Kings 21 verse 29, he asked Elijah, Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? He went about barefooted with head hung down, clothed in sackcloth and ashes. In mercy, God declared a postponement to Ahab's punishment. Though God declared that he would send the punishment during the days of Ahab's son. Some will see injustice in this, claiming that an innocent man was being punished for the crime of another. Let me point out a couple of things here. First of all, God is God. No one, let me repeat, no one has the knowledge, wisdom, or authority to declare anything God does, does to be unjust. Or is the case in prophet Jonah, Nineveh in Jonah, if you read chapter 1 to 3, you can read that, that and how God changed his mind again concerning the people of Nineveh, a wicked nation where everybody they killed, they put their skull at their doorpost just to show the number of people they killed. And they repented and God turned from the evil he has planned for the nation. I beg you brethren, by the mercies of God, don't settle for less of God. Take all the gift in and be all that God has called you to be and to do in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a postscript here for those who have this gift and they've, they buried them and put them in, 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 in closets and all of that. Or they receive things and shelf them uh, and admit and, and do all kinds of things. Don't keep silent when God shows or speaks to you about anything and anyone. And don't stop speaking out for fear it will not come to pass. The intent is for obedience in getting the specific mind of God on issues out. And more importantly, on repentance and not destruction. Develop your gift by speaking them to the intended recipient so that the gift can develop. And you can be more profitable in God's hand as he talks to his people uh, who uh, he wants to get a message across to. Now let's look at the last title here. Prophecy concerning the church in Africa, America, and the world by Prophetess Alicia for in-depth intercession on all fronts. Big names are going down, big churches are shutting down. Received three days ago, that's 24th of May, 2022. In the course of just concluded prayer and fasting for the church, the 40-day prayer that just ended in, uh, in uh, uh, April, the Lord revealed a lot of things concerning the nation, the church as well, and as we see these things, we also compare what we are seeing with other prophetic gifts in the body of Christ so that we are not misled. The Spirit of God is one and the Spirit of God in genuine prophets is one Spirit of God. And so God cannot be saying one thing to one person and speak a different thing uh, concerning that same issue to another person. 
there's going to be fragrance in the delivery there's a way that prophets in their fragrance deliver things we can depending on who god has called them to be how they deliver the messages you know just like we have mark matthew and the others the messages there are essentially the same but crafted and putting details and contents into them that you will not find with the other depending on the wiring of the people making the delivery in the message i sent earlier uh titled seven uh, yes, prophecy of purging, cleansing, and purifying concerning the churches and leadership in Nigeria, Africa, America, and the rest of the nations initiated on April 13, 2022, which you, you can find uh, via this link. I put the link in there on the website. You can do a search there. you find that prophecy. The details were there. I mentioned that uh, America has departed from the Lord and God is giving super passages over to China in seven years as the church goes through purging. I said America was like a desert and there was only one pastor standing when I went there in the spirit, in the fast. From a different prophetic gift in the body of Christ, I share this message received on, the, on May uh, 24, 2022. Read, meditate, and let it become something you include in your, in, uh, in your prayer cl closet. I bring you today from Prophetess Alicia for your consideration, prayer, meditation, and repentance. A different fragrance in the prophetic ministry. Big names are going down. Big churches are shutting down. I'm breaking up the mega churches, the conglomerate churches, and the franchise churches. I'm building up the body of Christ once again. I'm breaking up the churches into 50, 100, 200 member churches. I want the needy to be fed, clothed, helped, built, housed, and sent to school. I want my name on the leaves of individuals that are not church compliant. I want my name on the leaves of several tattooed men and women. I want my name on the leaves of prostitutes, pimps, pedophiles, rapists, kidnappers, gang members, and gang lords, and hackers, all those who feel they are not redeemable must find a place within these churches. America will be broken up as a nation. They are on their last toes. They don't see as they used to. The mighty weapon do that he was uh, the world well there. So he's rebelling against the world well there. Do independence. She has forgotten her place as a tool in my hand. Therefore, I'm transferring uh, said might to the continent of africa where she will be used mightily in battle she will wage war in the time of peace a great and variant tool in the hands of soldiers for the remnant who are asking for mercy i will spare america from total implosion but she won't recover she will be the has been and africa would known as a cinderella of her time this is my word. The Southern Baptist Convention scandal is only the beginning. People are going to lose members. Many pastors will lose their homes, their finances. They will even lose their marriages and children. This shock wave will blow across the nations into Europe and Asia. It will try to gain some foot in Africa, but the effect won't be felt. I am not sparing any church. Every church that has risen itself above my name will be broken up and reset to my image and liking. The church is supposed to mirror me, my grace, my kindness, my love, and my sacrifice. What they are doing is allow sin to fester and divide my children. The unworthy shepherds have allowed the wolves into the sheep's pen without any cloaking, uh, clothing. The wolves are plain to see and the shepherds don't care at all. May the ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches in this hour and repent in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there's what we call spiritual authority. There's, there are nations that have spiritual authority. Africa is going to be the spiritual authority. In, in terms of finance and economy, China will take over. But in terms of spiritual dominance, Africa will take over from America. That is the mind of the Spirit. I pray this message. I pray this message. Uh, today titled Perfect Prophecy, True Story of dividing, uh, Driving a Volkswagen Beetle on Three Wheels and Lessons, plus Prophecy Concerning Africa, America and the World for Intercession with subtitle as Perfect Prophecy in Perfect World Works in Wonder, True Story of Volkswagen Beetle Driven on Three Wheels by My Humble Self and Lessons Concerning Prophecy in the Churches and the Dark Ages, plus Prophecy Concerning the Church in Africa, America and the World by Prophetess Alicia for in-depth intercession on all fronts. Big names are going down, big churches are shutting down uh, received 24th of may 2022 has been brought has brought life light light life peace joy and love to you so that you can be all that god has called you to be and to do for his glory in jesus name 
amen so share wide the content to as many that would this would be a blessing to them this is uh, shalom to you and peace to you ambassador Oriol job monday or where god's ego ministries where we are seeding the nations with god's word and god himself is transforming lives through his timeless truth so let us pray heavenly father we just want to thank you one more time thank you for who you are thank you for you are greater than the greatest you are mightier than the mightiest you are holier than the holiest there is no one like unto you god in you we live we move and we have our being we without you we can do nothing of lasting impact thank you lord for today thank you because eyes have not seen nor ears heard nor has it entered into the heart of men what you have in store for us who seek you and call you by name who see you as our title our refuge the lifter up of our head father i pray oh god that you will do a new thing in africa you will do a new thing in the nations that have set themselves to seek you in spirit and in truth in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you lord for this word i've gone out it shall not go void but it shall come back with fruitfulness it shall come back performing the purpose and intent for which has been sent and come back with a testimony that it has been accomplished to the glory of your name and to our blessing thank you we cover ourselves the blood i cover myself the blood of jesus i cover them with the blood of jesus i declare that no weapon formed or fashion against them prosper and every tongue that rises against them stands condemned in the name of jesus i declare that every broken wall rise and be filled up in the name of jesus breaking walls around our lives around the work that you committed into our hands i declare be rise right now in the name of jesus thank you for answer prayer in jesus name amen and amen happy weekend